Good night, good night, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of season two of Make It Happen with Jamara. And tonight we have Empress Zinga Simmons coming to us. Um, so as we wait for everyone to come on, you know, I'm really excited about tonight's interview. I think she's one of the most dynamic persons that I have ever come across in my entire life. Um, she's absolutely brilliant. And I, I think she does so many things. I really would love to know how she gets everything to fit into her day. So welcome once again. I am Chamara Hollingsworth of Vision to Reality International. And I help women to structure their businesses by creating systems and processes to help them to streamline their business, get back their time, you know, get the back of the house in order and scale up their businesses. So feel free to link me if you want to find out more about what it is that I do. Let me take this time to just share the interview with a few people while I wait on others to come on. Hi, Empress. Uh, let me add you. How are you? I'm good. I was literally, just before I started sharing the uh, interview, I was literally just telling people that you're one of the most dynamic people that I've ever come across. And the first thing you do is like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's such oh, a great okay. personality. How is everything going with you? Things are good. Today was very busy. Um, mm -hmm. We had a lot of meetings today and... Mm -hmm. I took an hour off so that I can prep for this session with you. So I'm all here and all excited. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So let's let's get started so that you know I, I'm trying to like really get into it now. I'm trying to make a couple of changes this season to how the interview mm -hmm. runs. Um so one of the first things I want is for you to tell me a bit about you, who you are as a person. Ah, uh, well, me as a person, mm -hmm. such a loaded question. Good question, but very loaded. Um, I always say that I'm, I guess, dynamic. Is it really one skill from you? Um, I I do a lot of things. I am artist by profession. I'm a cultural practitioner by profession. Hence mm -hmm. the guy on shirt. Going on. Um, but I do so many different things. Um, I'm a writer, well, mm -hmm. author now. Um, I also kind of teach. I haven't done it in a while because the times have been so very busy. Mm -hmm. But I've also taught as well. Um, I'm a theater practitioner, so I act and I direct. Um, I'm a spoken word artist. Um, I do so many different things and outside of that as well I'm also a gamer I love video games so me and my husband usually spend time downtime when we do have it I'm um, doing co-op games on PlayStation and stuff like that because that's very important to us having a little bit of downtime with each other um, mm -hmm. but overall I think that I'm just a magical person and I know when I say that in some circles people are like oh Person. But I'm a magical person. I, I have to believe in that because as black people, we have to realize that we have black magic and we have to consider ourselves as magical people to get things done. Things in the world are 
very up in the air right now. They're mm -hmm. trying to find some form of normalcy right now, but Overall, in terms of the Black community and what I stand for, um, we have to realize that this is who we are and this is what we are going to produce as a collective. And that's a lot of why I do what I do. You, you see it in my work um, as an artist, but you also see it on the quote-unquote professional side. Um, I try not to use that word too often because everybody thinks professional is one way and should stay one way, yeah. but it's not, it's not like that anymore. I think the world, even having COVID, has pushed us into an arena of everybody's on the same level, and yeah. you might think that you are a suit and collar type type of person, but that doesn't mean that you are going to be like that. There are millions of people over the world who are making billions of dollars in jeans and sneakers. So yeah. that, I know that's a, like a lot to say, but that that's where my mind is at right now. Understood. Actually, I, I quite agree with you. Just now when you were saying that, one of the things that came to my mind is really the fact that, um, we tend to, to when, okay, my view is when we think of work, we, we tend to think of just a small piece of ourselves and we, we, we start splitting ourselves into different personalities as far as I'm concerned. You have your work personality, yeah. you have your, you know, your own personality, you have your personality with your friends. And uh, when is it that we can actually come together as this one person and just bring all of us to the table? Why can't we do that in the, in the workplace and just be ourselves? You know, yeah. I think that's something actually has been playing on my mind quite a bit lately. <laughs> you know? When you really sit down and think about when I think about my business, you know, I, you know, mm -hmm. looking at it, I was actually telling someone today one of the challenges I had is that when I started to think about how I needed to post on Instagram, mm -hmm. I used to think I need to put it in the most professional way possible because people need to see me in this light. But then Yeah, but what is professional? Exactly. Wow. What is this this term professional like? All right, we're we are both uh, conscious women. We have natural hair at locks. Mm -hmm. When when you go into certain boardrooms, sometimes hairstyles are not considered professional. Yeah. My hair right now is not in a ponytail; it in bantu knots or rather mm -hmm. lock knots. I should say not bantu knots. But when I walk into a room, I still have on my shirt. I still have on my beautiful African earrings and stuff like that, and. I have to be expressive and that does not negate you from doing the job correctly. It doesn't negate you from performing the task or pitching to, to, to an investor or whatever the case is. Most of the time, the investors don't really care about what you look like. It's mm -hmm. the people in between that actually care from my experience. Um, I've, I, or rather we have received a lot of investments because of how passionate we are about our business and how well we can articulate the things that we need and what we have achieved and it blows people out of the water. Sometimes you don't get investment because of your business. Sometimes the investor invests in you. As so the, these, these, these things I think are making their way out, thank God, mm -hmm. because too many people have been overlooked because of their background, mm -hmm. of their socioeconomic status, of where they come from. If you from the farm or the village or Clapham or wherever versus mm -hmm. Heights Terraces and Crystal, whatever, um, Sandy Lane, people, people think that you're supposed to walk, talk, and act a certain mm -hmm. way. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you're a dynamic. Your whole, your whole concept dynamic diva <laughs> like even the word diva like you gotta yeah. say it from your chest i am a dynamic diva like people gotta see and hear you coming like there's no apology yeah. where that is concerned fair enough i actually agree because i i actually one of the things i was looking at too is that at the end of the day people really want connection and they're not necessarily going to connect with the words on the paper that's just given like the literal technical jargon they're going to connect with mm -hmm. who the person is behind the business or who the person is that they're interacting with in the business um and it's like what you said once they start to meet you as a person and they start to get a feel for who you are they're more likely to invest in you because they had the opportunity to get to know a bit of you 
you know actually right now I'm, i was there looking at you just now i was like see look look at all this passion right here like in this <laughs> one here on, on my screen you know that's what people are looking for you know so mm -hmm. tell me a bit about what it is you do? I mean, you mentioned that you are a co-founder of Going On Magazine. You mentioned that you're an author, you're a mm -hmm. uh, writer. I, I would say a poet. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you are also in theater arts. It's like a whole list of things that you just went down, you know? So yeah. tell, tell us a bit uh, more or pick a few that you would like to tell people a bit more about. Um, well, the first one is, is, let me start from the beginning, do an origin story. So, spoken word, more specifically writing, has been a very big part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I always tell this story to everybody. The first time I saw my name on a paper, when my great-grandmother taught me how to write my name on a piece of paper in that little kitchen, I was blown away that letters could mean something or that my name could form these things. I started like looking at different letters and trying to carve them out on this little old sheet that she has scrap as she called a lead pencil. I tried my best to wrap my fingers around this thing and carve out my name. Then she started to give me books, different types of books to read. And the idea that my thoughts could carry me and influence me into different spaces whether it was realism or fantasy, like, because I was the only child. So mm -hmm. the only way I could escape, so to speak, when I wasn't with adults most of the time is through books, through stories, through figuring out why does this work versus why this doesn't work? Why would people say this and why you don't say that? And my love of writing and reading came from the age of six. My first performance was at six years old. Mm -hmm. um, coming from that, um, I guess I, you could say that I branch off more into going into a school of acting, um, school of acting, school of culture, school of theater, um, school of art, because you learn so many different things. And I went and I got a first and a second degree. It wasn't going to do the second degree because it doesn't have any. And then I got a chance to get a partial scholarship for it. And that everybody was like, oh, you ain't got the choice now the government go pay for your education go do it and i did and growing and learning the academic concepts of what art could be mm -hmm. and where it came from gave me even more appreciation for it um one of my main mentors um in life i guess when it comes to arts and culture was sonia williams and big up sonia she ever sees this and we still keep in contact a couple of weeks ago. Um, learning from her was a very big turning point for me. Mm -hmm. um, learning about my ancestry and how it was placed in work via authors, by uh, people who, who created things and tried to keep culture alive and how we are all connected via culture and how we are all connected via a story um, and how that networks in growing a community. It was really, really big for me and opening my eyes and having empathy for different cultures. It was amazing and I did a whole play, many plays, about different things that I would have learned. Um, fast forward now, I guess the third thing um, would be Gainon.com. Um, and that's Gainon.com went through so many phases. We spoke about this today, actually, that the fourth anniversary, I think it is, is next month. We're only four years old. And the amount of work that we have done in this short space of time, I sat down today and thought about it. I was like, wow. And we started off as Gaina Magazine. And this funny story always creeps out. Like, how long did I get Gaina? Um, Gaina started because DJ and I, DJ is my husband, for those who don't know, um, we are both artists. Whenever we go to perform anywhere, people would see the pictures in the nation, in the newspaper, online, be like, oh, why didn't know you was performing at these things? And why you didn't tell me that you was performing at these things? And you would try to compensate that by telling them the next event, 
Then we would share other things from other people. And it's like, oh, but I didn't know they had this event or that event. So you compensate for that by doing that. And one day, DJ just started to put up events, continuously putting up events um, on Facebook. He did a little flyer and posted it. Nothing fancy. And then it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it turned into a digital magazine. And then I was like, but we're going out all the time. We're showcasing all of these different um, artists and cultural practitioners, but we don't interview them. Like, I, we still have that camera, um, a small Canon camera that did video. And I said, let me just try something and put it up. Because I remembered doing my thesis, trying to find information about cultural practitioners who had passed I mean, yeah, you could probably get lucky and ask somebody a question who was still alive. But those who had transitioned, there was no information anywhere about them, their true ideas, desires about certain topics. And it sparked something in me that I probably had the power to do that, especially coming off this humongous cusp of my thesis and what, <clears throat> and what that represented for me. So we started doing interviews and then going into 10 Habitat, our business mentor with Selwyn Cambridge, like totally put us through a boot camp that was very rigorous. It was one of the most scary things I've ever done as a business person because they took our business and tore it to shreds and see so you will start from the bottom and rebuild it because they saw potential in what we were doing and how best it could evolve. So Gainon Now is a full web platform. And Gaino.com is a portal, web portal, for all arts and culture in Barbados. And we tell the stories of cultural practitioners and artists of Barbados. That's, that's what we do. And it's very important for us to have that mandate because one of the things that inspired us as well was Chimamanda's uh, lecture um, overseas. She is an author and uh, Afro activist, I guess I can call her that. Um, she calls herself a feminist. If you have ever heard of the book called We Should All Be Feminists, that's one of her books. And she spoke about the idea of the danger of the single story. So when people all over the world hear about Barbados, it's more about the sun, the sand, the sea, the coconuts, and relaxing. And that's about it, you yeah. know? And there's more to us than that. Of course, all Bajans know that there's so much more dynamics to us. How we walk, talk, eat, our culture, um, our history of enslavement, but also the history of riches, of who we are and who we should be and who we are going to be in this space. And we try to tell the stories of the people as best as we can um, to the best of our ability. So from a digital flip book to a full online web platform. What has even grown from that is obviously people now are getting, are getting more acquainted with us and they know about the Guyana People's Choice Awards, which this year was the second time. And we do nothing with that but put it on. We invite the public to nominate people and we invite the public to vote for people. And whoever has the best work for the year of whatever year it is in is awarded. And this year we had so many categories. I think up to like 40 something categories, no, like 41 categories or something like that. And we had so many hits over like, I guess I see somebody and we're going on. He's probably DJ. Um, he could probably give me the factoids and the facts and the, the digital data and all that. But there were so many people watching this in a short space of time. It was very overwhelming to put on, to create, to explain over and over that we are not rigging anything, that this is just our appreciation for what is happening in Barbados. And the outpouring of love, I think, is even more overwhelming than maybe the little bit of hate that we received because mm -hmm. artists felt as though they were being seen for the first time. Mm -hmm. Even the ones who didn't get an award, they felt like somebody is seeing me. Somebody understands what is happening to me as an artist. And they felt validated after 
all of this hard work. And people send me messages, I'm crying and thing, and I'm like, how you know because that is there? Um, the thing about it is, like, so I kind of just want to, like, tap back into a few points. But before I forget, when, to me, you talked about how it made the people feel, people that would have been nominated and, and awarded at the Glenor Magazine. But the other side of it, it actually gives other people things to aspire to because it's like BGs are bread. I would like to be get to, to get considered for a category as well, you know. So therefore I yeah. need to like, put in the work so that people can see me, you know, I could become more visible in this particular area so that maybe I could get nominated for this category. You know, so yeah. it is, you know, really and, and DJ, I assume it is DJ is there dropping in some facts. He's saying that it's fifty categories, <laughs> yeah. eighty thousand views, over fifty thousand individual votes. You understand? Yeah, they're doing big things, and I think that's absolutely phenomenal. Um, Thank you. even a little further back into what you were saying about um, where people were thinking of Barbados of as sun, sea, and sand. You know, mm -hmm. I thought what I was thinking a little earlier is that sometimes even when you want to do a little research, and it might not just be the cultural practitioners, but when you want to do a little research about Barbados, it's very, very difficult to find information. You know. Yeah. And yeah, this information digitally. Maybe you can go to the archives and find out some of this information. But who's yeah. really? I mean, but that takes that before. takes a lot of work as well. You, yeah. I find more people who are more academic. If you're doing a research paper, um, very little people, or the amount of people who would go down that road is very little. Um, to say that they're going to go and and get information from the archives because you have to reserve this spot. You can't touch the paper in a certain way. You gotta wear gloves. You gotta go through all the microfilm, like depending on what you're looking for. Uh, well, for me, I'm a big nerd and I love that. Um, the average Bajan, they really about say it all in the old dusty book. Like, I love a library, I love a book. But the average Bajan, really about that. They want the information now, you know what I mean? So um, it, it is, it is taxing to say the least to get certain types of information and then there are people who just don't want to release the information because they feel that you're gonna match it up so it's up to you how far you want to dig um for said information yeah pretty much so i, I think it's wonderful that you're actually putting things in place for people to be able to find information about people at least from from here and going forward and you said that y'all yeah. were only like this year would be four years. I literally feel like y'all have been around forever. That's the honest truth. And I can actually <laughs> remember the days when it was literally a list of these are the events that are happening, you know, this month in Barbados. Yeah. And I used to literally go looking for that. And I think at one point, I think y'all had it up on a website. So I used to literally go on the website looking. Yeah. Okay, it's, still, like, it's still there, a little yeah. dormant because there weren't a lot of face-to-face um events obviously because of covid but we still put up events that were like this one um a lot of instagram lives facebook lives classes zoom meetings zoom lectures they were all there um we've slowed down quite a bit on the events um, because we have been trying our best to clean up the back end of the business because whilst everybody sees everything finished and polished and you can see videos of surf right you can check that out guys um all all these beautiful videos that we're doing um there's still some back end stuff as somebody who's ran a business you can appreciate there's a lot of back end stuff that happens um that you have to figure out like organizing the right team making sure that people understand this is this is the focus this month and this is what we want to build um like currently we're doing the freedom festival um this is our second year doing that because last year obviously there was no crop over covid again mm -hmm. and we still wanted to contribute to the crop over festival and we did um the freedom festival and this is the second year and it was compiled with as many genres as we could have figured out at the time um we had literary arts magazine that also had in photography as well so the photographers would have um given their their pieces and the the writers would have written stuff based on some of the photography in that in that magazine as well um we had dance where just they launched a music 
uh, well, a song rather, and Shamika, Mika Mix, who's one of our hosts. She's also a dancer. Um, she was one of those dancers who judged um, a choreography based on just the song, trying to get more artists to be seen with their new music, but also getting uh, the community to be a part of that. We had the BCC Theater Company. They did um, an emancipation theater thing, and it was on Zoom, and it was really, really well received. Um, we even have a spoken word showcase. Obviously, spoken word got to be represented because the <laughs> co-founders are spoken word artists. Yes. So we had to do that. And this year, that will be happening again. We even had a visual arts gallery, digital online gallery as well for the Freedom Festival. This year, we might not be able to do the visual arts gallery because because of time, it's very, very bony for us this year. So the Manpower 2 is a little shortcoming, so we might not be able to do the visual arts, but more information on the festival should be coming up from next month. So if there are any spoken word artists out there who might be interested coming down in the latter weeks, um, you can keep your ears to the ground for that so that you can, you know, give us a video. We might be actually um, recording some of the videos as well. So there's that. And I think today DJ put up the web page for um, the literary arts um, people as well. So if you're a literary artist um, and you think that you can put in a contribution as well, you can do that as well. So like, there's so much going on, literally, <laughs> that we are trying to encapsulate as best as we can and as seamlessly as we can as well. That's great. Okay, so before I continue, um, Music Matter said that when he asked Bajans, or she, I'm sorry, right, asked Bajans about Mr. Watson's death in terms of the landship, no one knew, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's important things like this that we tend to miss. And yeah, uh, we're going on and saying visit going on dot com Freedom Festival for more yes. slash Freedom Festival for more information. We're going yes. on dot com slash Freedom Festival for more information on the Freedom Festival. Um, so you just mentioned a whole bunch of things, right? And and some <laughs> of them are the things that I really want to ask you about. So you're doing all of this. You're running a business. You mentioned the children's books are not so, but that's all right. <laughs> How do you you're, forget it? <laughs> you're, you're running a business. And one of the things I wanted to find out from you is how do you go about, because you mentioned your team, how do you go about determining the type of people or, you know, the, the type of people you want or who you need as a part of your team? Well, funny enough, from our experience, a lot of people come to us mm -hmm. um, asking us up to today. I think she's still in here, Music Matters. Um, we had a conversation and like people see us. We try to be as open and as transparent in what we do as best we can. I know there's always room for improvement in terms of communicating who we are and what we do but I think that we attract our market we attract our community very well I can say that without a fact without a shadow of doubt of fact um, and creating the right team is tricky and I always ask people who have the right team or who have what they consider to be the right team, how do they do it? And everybody says the same thing, it's trial and error. Um, you're gonna get people today who are going to be with you and then they're gonna get their own ideas to start their own thing or they might not work out at all because they were just there for like the fame of it all. Mm -hmm. um, some people think that this is a very glamorous job that you sit him down with celebrities all the time and you're doing all this stuff, but when you got to rig a cable in a microphone, set up soft boxes, check out the sound, and make sure that it's synced and linked, doing run and tests, and then the breakdown is just as cumbersome. By the way, we have no care. We haven't had a care now in quite some time. So all of this lovely equipment, soft box lights, sound equipment, mixers, um, camera equipment, all of this stuff is caught on public transportation. 
or via the gift from friends of transportation. So either those things work or you just gotta suck it up one day and mount all these things on your back. Like people that see people in the road with six and seven bags, like what are they actually doing? Why y'all don't get a taxi? It doesn't work that way all the time. Yeah. But building a team is is trial and error and you're not gonna get it the first time. Um, I think we're both learning to let go of the reins a little bit. We have a small team right now um, that will come on, I would say, part-time. They're not full-time. So if there's, like, the awards, for example, they'll come and help out. Um, the festival as well, they'll come and help out. But the actual day-to-day, -day, what everybody will call the eight-hour job, we don't have anybody that is specifically with us all the time. Um, and we are learning to give way to that because we actually quote unquote hired somebody a couple of weeks ago, let's say two weeks to help us um, to join the team as well, to help us answer emails. Emails are so hard, guys. I don't know if anybody out there has got a lot of emails, but that is like one of the most annoying things for me. I love people, but I hate emails. Because you have to answer an email about this thing and that thing. Sometimes you gotta wait for somebody to confirm or you gotta do a meeting and this and thing. And emails come in at you all the time. Mm -hmm. And some days you start at seven o'clock in the morning, at twelve o'clock is lunch, and you still there answering emails. You're like, What am I doing? I, I can't sit on here doing this all the time. So sometimes they don't get answered um to time and you apologize. But yeah, building a team is is there's no one formula, I don't think, to build a team. I think that you just have to give, when you do go to get a team or build a team and you know somebody is coming on board, you want to maybe start with an intern as we were speaking about today in our meeting. Maybe try an intern, see how that intern works. You don't have to give them all of your gravy of your business, but maybe see how well they do. How, how can they how do they work well how do they take direction um how do they represent your company like this should be foundation for anybody running your or should say running your business but helping you to organize your business how do they represent your company um everything else can be taught but the passion for working with a company and how best they they handle pressure especially when things are really busy how can they take initiative? If I tell you I want X done, you sh I shouldn't have to sit with you unless this is a training, uh, a training thing I have to train you for. If I, if you say that you do X and I tell you do X for me, I shouldn't have to be behind you micromanaging. How best do they take initiative and do the job well? And I think that that is a good base to start when you're trying to build a team, especially from an internship level. Okay. All right, so back in track, back tracking through <laughs> the um the comments. Sorry, we're bringing no wet somewhere completely different. So that's cool. Going going on dot com online lit magazine for those persons who are interested in being a part of the literary magazine. Um, also shout out to Doctor John Hunt for his culture clinic column. Um, yes. That's been, I'm assuming DJ as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you would have mentioned all of this about building out the team. So one of the things I actually was discussing with somebody today in terms of, I, I always use an example of when I first, first started my business and I hired admin assistants, right? And I found myself like really... Because I, I started, I guess, before I was ready. I didn't know what I wanted. And I heard these people because I was like, I just need help. Right? Mm -hmm. And I found myself like, literally micromanaging them over their shoulders. Like, are you doing this the right way? And then every step of the way, I had to say, okay, do I want this? Do I want that? You know, that kind of stuff. So how important is it to know what you want before bringing somebody else onto the team? It's very important because then you're just working randomly. Um, if somebody comes into your business as an employee or better yet, as a client, and the person cannot articulate what the business does, then you're in trouble. 
because you don't know what your business does and or you are not an effective communicator to your staff. And that is a very big plot hole, as it was say in writing. It's an extremely big plot hole because when a client comes and their first interaction is with a staff member or admin department or whoever, it's going to leave a sour taste because they're leaving thinking one thing when it's actually another thing. Knowing your business is so important. And yes, I am married and, and yes, I am a, a, a co-founder. Even those who are not married, but you run a business with somebody, uh, investors drill you. They drill you to the baller about what it is your business is about because they're trying to see if these co-founders are on the same page and they find as though now that you're in a partnership with somebody, they want to see, okay, they say that them about this and they will take you apart. Like <laughs> there were instances where people talk to us over there and this other person talked to us over there and it was only a strategy to figure out are they really on the same page? Do they really know their business? Or is this one person knowing everything and the other person just tagging along? And there are many an evening that you had to stand up for your business and, and know and trust in, in your, your, your partner, whether it is friendship, marriage, whatever, or just business partners, that this, this is what it is and this is how it goes. And knowing your business is very important and how you make sales. Um, how you, you, you make money. You can't make money and not know your business. It's, it's critical that you know this stuff um, because then you just get a random job or a random client or a random staff member and then you're dead out in the water trying to do random solutions for random problems and your business is just they're dead in the water. It doesn't grow. It doesn't do anything. Okay, so I think this is interesting because very recently, um, in terms of my business, what I've been focusing on the last few weeks is the customer journey because um, my aim is to really teach people more about systems and processes in their business and ensuring that they have the right systems and processes in place. So I wanted to kind of start from the top, you know, I'm mm -hmm. on down and one, the business is nothing without customers. You know, so you have to really think about what your customer journey or your customer experience is. And yeah. I think this is very important. It actually is something that you just mentioned in terms of if you don't know, then you can't communicate it to your client well. One of the things I also point out is the importance of knowing the target market. Right? And yes. so who is your market? You know, you mentioned that just now in terms of making sure that you get information out there to your market and, and that they receive the information well, so to speak, like kind of worded mm -hmm. it a little differently. Yeah. But who's your market, you know? Yeah, I just want well, to know that you need to be clear on who your market is so that you know yeah. exactly how you're going about doing things. Definitely, know? definitely. Um, our, our market is user and client base because we have users those who use the platform, those who go on and interact with the platform. And of course, we have our clients. And our clients are really startup companies, small businesses, and corporations. And we've had some amazing relationships um, with corporate companies, utility companies as well. Um, one of our favorites is with the Barbados Light and Power. Um, they wanted to create a campaign for that, that segment for something called What's News TV. I think that's what it was called. DJ will correct me. But W-A-T-T -T as in the, what, the wattage of a light. So they had What's News Radio and then they had What's News TV. And we were asked to bring our spin to it. And the beautiful thing about this story is that we were so unique. Like, I was like, why, why do you all want Gainan to do? I mean, yes, you're a media company. We can't do this. You do want the job. But what, why is it that you wanted us specifically? And they said that because you guys were so different. Um, the way how you create media, the way how you tell a story, they were very into our company. And that is something I feel so proud of, that we were so different. Everybody wants this this glossy, pristine look, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
but I found that creating this company going on when it's one thing to be grassroots and recording people in the street or playing pool or a grassroots artist, cultural activist. It's one thing to do that. When you get in a boardroom and you establish who you are and what you stand for and it doesn't align, people have a hard time looking at you a certain way. And Hearing the words going on in like a bougie circle when we first started, it still tends, kind of still tends to happen. But I remember being at event, numerous events actually, come to think of it, when the host announces that so-and-so from going on is here or big ups to going on in the crowd or how people would laugh at our name. We ran our very first campaign for the awards, and I always say I want to frame this because as we grow, I must remember this. We got the most beautiful written email. It was almost like a two-page email about how awesome um, this, this whole initiative of the awards were, how beautiful it was how great we created community, um, the website, who built the website. You guys built the website. We didn't know that Barbados could create such polished things. The problem with us is, is that going on, um, we'll never get anywhere because of the name. We have to change our name. We will never get any further. And I will always remember that as long as I live because people wanted it to be what Simmons Incorporated. Like, ugh. What is that? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you see you? Every time you talk, a whole bunch of things pop up in my head at the same time. <laughs> right? Before I go on, earlier up in the comments, I cannot remember who it is. Somebody said that you were absolutely brilliant. But I forgot to read it. I can't scroll back. Thank, up you, can't <laughs> Thank you to whoever it was. <laughs> I, I can't scroll back up because Instagram kind of changed how the the look of the, the life, mm -hmm. and I don't have to get accustomed to this. I did not know that the look of the lives changed. Um, yes. The Minister MC is saying, you inspire me so much. I understand that. My I appreciate life. you, Minister. And the Minister <laughs> Tropical Effect. So. Hi, Nikki. I think I just saw her fly up, name fly up. <laughs> so, oh, Nikki, Nikki right side. Yes, that's my friend from New York. We've been friends since nursery school, man. <laughs> so, right, Minister is saying boo to Simmons, Inc., right? I, <laughs> I kind of on the same page as him with that. Um, <laughs> so, one of the things that came up in my head, and this is something that I also discussed recently with a client. Um, one of the things, she had this challenge um, where... She had her website put up and everything. She was so sure about mm -hmm. the direction she was going in. And then mm -hmm. someone came to her and said, I don't understand how to work with you. And she got so flustered that she changed mm -hmm. the entire website and then was uncomfortable with it. Right? So I, 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 that came to my mind because of what you said about this email. And I think you have to be so sure you know, so sure about yeah. what it is that you want and what it is that you are offering so that no yeah. one can phase you, you know? And yeah. I think it, it's, to me, the fact that you just mentioned that it really speaks to your resilience, you know, mm -hmm. and, and your strength in knowing, okay, look, people are going to criticize this. Thing. I actually always let me in. Right, because it's so big, and I mean, like, going on, like, that's what they know. It's something that we say all the time, and mm -hmm. the way that you're branded, I think, is something that people around the world can very easily catch on to. I mean, people come up with this, the strangest names. Let me not say what I said, the strangest <laughs> names for their businesses and their household names, you know, like, why, why can't going on be one? Why, because yeah. then, you know, we are good enough. Yeah, you know, so I I admire your resilience for making sure that you kept the brand, you know, the name of the business because I think it's a powerful, thing, you know. Thank you. And it kind of encompasses everything, like yeah, everything. definitely. You know? And so, I do want to remind all 
we don't like to say small businesses because it keeps you in a box. Yeah. We say emerging business because it means you can scale your business, make it bigger. If you say you're a small business, ain't going away. So you're an emerging business. That's true. I will say to all emerging businesses, to everyone who watches this in its entirety, you get to this part. When you are trying to grow your business, always remember that everybody ain't for you. Yep. We try so hard to get leads, to get people who are potential customers, leads. Mm -hmm. We try so hard to get leads and people nibble every now and again. They might like a post, they might comment, they might do this, but it never transitions to sale and you feel bad or people might support you today and not tomorrow and all the other stuff that comes with running a business. If you get caught up on that, your business will sink surely. Whether you are a somebody who's selling books or somebody who's performed or you're selling a, a service, it doesn't matter. People are too caught up with who isn't buying. I would rather sit in front of a video with one person yep. and know that I'm going to get a sale from that one person than to sit down with a thousand people who don't care nothing about my business or what I have to say. I know that you, you want people to spend money with you all the time. You want reoccurring finances all the time. I'm not saying that I ain't gonna feel good if I got a thousand people looking at me but, and, and they could turn that. But if I know for a fact that this market is not for me, unless I have a really good strategy and getting some people over and funnel them across by me, it doesn't make sense to bang your head against the table thinking that you've lost X amount of people. It doesn't. That means that nobody, that, that market is for you. People say a lot that, oh, this body don't support me and think, yes, I get that. But that means that, that they're not in your market. Oh, my mother don't buy from me. Does your mother, is she even interested in that? Yes, she might support you every now and again because you're her daughter or her son or whatever and they love you and they will buy. But the value that you are creating, and that's also something you got to check, the value that you are creating, is it connected with her as a customer? Does she really care about the thing that you are creating or she just care about you? In your target market. Is she in your target market? Is she in your niche market? Because you could go deeper than that. All of these things we have to take into consideration. And all of these things about vanity metrics and thing on follow, on follow, and that sort of stuff. That that actually makes me feel good. Because if if I get on follow, it means then that I don't have to worry about that particular person being in there. That means that that, that that work or that job was done for me. I don't have to worry about looking through insights and trying to figure out when to post and how to post. That person has told me that they are not a part of my market. So then we move on, you know? Maybe they'll come back later. Also, you have to look at the value that you are creating for your company, for your clients, uh, for your customers. People think that they're creating really good stuff. But if you look at your insights and the people who is your ideal customer come, after a while, they might get bored with certain things that you're posting. Post the things that people like. You don't want people money? Post the things, sell the things that the people want. Why you keep building things that you like? It's not about you. Is about the people that you want the money from. If the man said, I want this remote, are you selling inhalers? That man going to buy this. They yeah. want this. What is it? What is the value that you're creating? Are you giving information to help build up the person to get information from you? That's why people do speakers. This is what Shamara is doing right here. Um, giving information to her, to her community so she can be seen as an authority on that. So what is it that you are trying to do? And when you are clear and concise about what you're trying to do for your business, the people are going to come. The people are going to come. And trust me, they're going to come. You know who watching. That one body for it versus 1,000, that one person might be the body that walking with $10,000. It's true. So, so true. And not only that, even if they aren't, they might be the person to actually spread the word to more people that 
Exactly. You don't know who that person got in their, their network. Exactly. Um, Beja Fam is saying you definitely need that clarity. And I really agree. I think we really need to really work on being clear on who we are as a business mm -hmm. and who our target market is and what we are offering. You know, like all of those things we need to, to have some serious, serious clarity on. Yeah. Um, so the question, oh, before I go to that, all right, let me write it down before I forget. <laughs> all right. Before I go to that, you mentioned um, earlier about when the, I would say the police were, were interrogating you all in different areas. So, <laughs> um, my thing is communication. I, you know, mm -hmm. that is really key. What, how do I want to frame this question? Right. Just I, think, I think it is really interesting because you're you're a married couple, you know, so it really speaks to the type of relationship y'all have. Mm -hmm. Right. And it kind of will lead into my next question. How do you go about really communicating what you all want for businesses? Like, do you have these sit down meetings so that y'all can really hash out what the business is about? How do you all make sure that you get on the same page for the business so that everybody that comes on board is very clear about what it is that y'all are doing as well. Well, yeah, we, we do business meetings. <laughs> we treat it like a business. Um, marriage time is marriage time and business time is business time. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes marriage and business is going to, it's going to fall off. Guys. Like, I think we're still learning how to separate it consistently like up to today we were think we were um talking about that i think it has overlapped a lot more this time around because of covid and everything in the house so the equipment in the house the beatings in the house it's it's interesting <laughs> it's interesting but um yes we do we do have business meetings i we've had a business meeting up to today and we, we've sat down and we've spoken about who we want to interview where we want to interview them what is it that we want for our company in the next x amount of years what is it that you see and now that i'm sitting here seeing the outload and it's coming back into my thought process i don't think that there's ever going to be a clear cut uh definitive lane for this is business and this is at some point there's going to be a blurred lane and it's a blurred lane because yes we are married and we are a black couple trying to build legacy and a lot of people are building businesses but not looking towards that type of future especially when you're with some somebody that you love and care for very much i know there are many people who have told me if they were running a business with their partner they would kill them because they cannot stand to communicate with them. It's very hard, and they don't know how we do it. I remember Nicholas Branker, we had interviewed him for another project, and he just was like, sit him back, and he said, well, what is fight? I thought it's so absurd, and I came around the corner. I said, um, not that I can think of. <laughs> He's like, so when is Lonnie tired? I want to want another. And up to today, DJ asked me that if if I am tired that he be around heating. I was like, no, I'm 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 pretty good. I think that if the flip side of of that was if he was working or one of us was working on going on and the other person had a regular regular job, I think that it would have destroyed us because the amount of time you need to sit on this business is so time consuming that I don't think the other person would have seen that person because you're getting up very ridiculous hours. You're going to sleep very ridiculous hours. Like people be talking about daytime DJ gets up at four o'clock. Sometimes I'm up at four or five o'clock depending. Um, but I do go to sleep very, very late. He goes to sleep early and gets up early, but I go to sleep late. I will burn right through. Cause I don't sleep. I have insomnia. Um, so there's there's that you know that duality there as well 
um, communication is a very, very big part of our job because that's what we do. We, we are storytellers from every aspect. <laughs> so there, there are times that you got to take a break. I'm not saying that there aren't disagreements, there aren't arguments from time to time, but us as two people outside of business, um, we don't we don't quarrel a lot, and if we disagree to a point that is heated, whatever that is, um, we always come back because there the world is so to get spiritual. The universe is so big, God is so big that there are so many things that are going on in the back end, not only with us but with everybody. That the things that you quarrel over don't really matter. And as I get older, I realize that as well, um, about us and about myself as well, that there's so much things to do, so much going on um, in the world that I can't, I can't get hung up about who left for wet towel on the bed, why this body in the family in call, you know, the most, uh, not even about bills. If we argue about bills, it's because people ain't pay me. And we're trying to figure out which one are we going to shell. That, that is honestly it. Like, today, I'm ready to pick up the phone and shell down somebody that owe me money. But I, and they're just like, no, you got to be more thing. And ta, ta. Or it might flip one day and heave it. So, like, nah, I can't do that today. You know, remember? We signed a contract. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's like, that, that is where the most heated debate will come. But in terms of you are not taking care of this business good enough or you are not a good provider or you are you're only into your thought process it has never crossed my mind um to me i guess that's just from the basis of our own personal relationship that has grown through and if you want to create this legacy that everybody is talking about and how black people should create legacies and businesses and pass on generational wealth to their children and grandchildren and so on. Well, then you're going to go find a way to communicate the best ways to make it work. Because mm -hmm. if you keep breaking apart this thing over and over, we're going to always be at zero and black people ain't got nothing. So what are you really about? Let me know. You got things to do. <laughs> Pretty much you're saying you ain't got time for the pettiness, right? You know, yeah. time for that. You just got to you know work and keep the focus and, and just push through and make sure that everything on point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so considering that time is coming down, my <laughs> question to you, actually it is so it you touched on it a little bit. Um and I think it's going to be like a three part question in a sense, you know. So it's like how do you find that balance? How do you, like, where do you create boundaries? And then how do you really find that opportunity to, to, to keep your individuality in a relationship where you are living and working? With it? I mean, like, y'all have your separate projects. So it's like, when the friends, <laughs> do you find the time to write a book or create a, a, a spoken word piece or be a part of a play? You know, like, how? Um... I think it just kind of happens because we both come from the same background and we understand why art is important and creating art is important. And when an opportunity arises for either one of us, the other knows that that person should do it be because it is a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. This this concept of art and people might not look at it from that perspective. Art is very, very spiritual and you get called to speak on certain things and create certain things. So when I know that DJ tells me he got to write a piece or there's something he has to talk about, he can write it. I don't know how going on is going to get through tomorrow, but you're going to write it today. Because you don't get the same bite after that initial thing has happened. It must happen. It means that you're being called by something higher than you. Your higher self is being asked to speak 
you're be you're asked to be you're you're speaking on behalf of a higher calling mm -hmm. and when he says he gonna do something he didn't do it same thing with me um in terms of boundaries i don't know i guess it just kind of happens that if i want to be i'm more so a home body than an outside body so i might find myself in in a in a particular space that i have at home is my spiritual space my crystals are in there um I meditate in here. All this different stuff happens in this room. Um, sometimes DJ will come in and ask if I'm okay. Tell him, yeah. If he want to meditate with me, he'll meditate with me. Um, or he will just leave me by myself. And then I will come out of my shell and, and regenerate. DJ, on the other hand, is very, very out there. He likes to go out. He likes to meet people. He likes to go and drink beer, um, slam dominoes on the table and stuff like that. Not that I don't do that, but sometimes I like to be more quiet. And if he tell me he's going out, cool. And a lot of people that's be like, so you ain't no ready to go in now. <laughs> so you ain't worried, no? So what he ain't call you? I don't care. Like, do you want DJ? <laughs> Why you asking me all these questions? We asking me. Like, there's a level of trust. I, I know that he's not going to disrespect me in any manner. Like, Mm -hmm. The most if after sir her time go call and make sure that he hadn't bust open so we're in a gutter. Oh you good? All right, cool. I roll back and go back to sleep. You know, he will call, Oh, I forget my key. All right, I will get on lock your door with my buddy and go back to my bed. Like I pretty chill. Like I tell you, I got things to do. We you both. <laughs> what are you about? And and that is where that is. I think one of the more fun things for us is playing video games because I have learned in co op games that I am not the best communicator. Um, and I think that that has been a very big thing for us because I have been a gamer long before I met DJ. I'm a nerd and a geek, so maybe it was meant to be. Um, now we have two PlayStations in the house, so sometimes, let's say 1 o'clock, the last meeting wrap up, and we can go and sit down in front of the PlayStation for like an hour or two and do some stuff. And learning how to play with somebody in a game is very interesting. Because DJ pointed out to me that when the monster is coming, I just pick up the shotty and I just move. And left he did standing up, like he did digging in the treasure box. And when he look around, I hear me say, oh, I got dead now. You can heal me. What are you talking about? Are you standing up here again, revive? And like, he's like, you, you have to tell me what you're doing. And then I realized, oh, yes, I'm a little too independent. Teamwork makes the dream work. I am leaving the treasure box. Can you come with me, please? So I, I, I have learned that. And many people might look at that and laugh at that. Um, but that, that is a very big thing to communicate, to learn how to communicate through video games. That's a big, big thing for me. And what you want and how you say it and how you articulate it. Because you might say that you want one thing, but... The person hears it differently, and then one body's end up being dead. Go, you really so you didn't really want. <laughs> so it is. It's kind of it's kind of interesting, and and learning learning how to have each other's back in certain situations when playing video games as well. It really it really works on your mind and your mindset on how like people just do all of these business games and things and these theater games and stuff like that for businesses but nobody has ever tried video games before maybe i'll do that um and teach the company how to bring communion to each other within the company via video games and co-ops i think that that would be awesome um and how to articulate what you want and it will be fun you know what i mean so those those are just little things that <laughs> DJ and Keisha have have grown up together doing because we've known each other now for over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're at the point of knowing each other very, very well. There's still a lot to learn, you know, as you get older, things might change. You might change your idea on a, on a topic or whatever. But for the most part, check in, check in with your partner, ask them what you want. Were you really both? You still like mushrooms? Oh, you don't like them no more? All right, what about avocados? Oh, you like avocados now? Okay, cool. So, like, those those yeah. little things mean a lot. Just just check in. Check in and talk. Talk, guys. As hard as it may be, <laughs> talk. It will save you a lot of trouble. I feel like, in a sense, one of the things, just listening to you, like, for me, I'm not a video game person, but I would do, like, mm -hmm. computer games and not necessarily 
with somebody else, but one of the things I start to realize I have a lot of epiphanies when I'm doing computer games. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I always used to think I was a little weird for it because it's like, okay. No, no. <laughs> because people are looking at the surface of video games and they know that this is business and a business conversation, but this is all about logic and how yeah. you see the world and how you attack certain problems and, and trying to find solutions. Video gaming, games, whether it's on a PlayStation, whether it is worry, actually have worry outside, um, whether it is Scrabble or words with friends or whatever it is that you're playing, it unlocks something in your brain mm-hmm. um, in terms of how to strategize and how, how you strategize as a person, but how you can strategize most effectively with another person to get to a particular objective. And I find that we've done that a lot um, because some of the games that we have played are for 10 people or like four people or three people. And there's only two of us and like a thousand monsters or something like that. And you got to find a way, the best way you can to achieve your goal. Now tip it, if this was in the real world and it's only me and you in this boardroom, and we got five angel investors that don't believe in this, the art of war. How am I going to strategize to get at least one person to give me a second meeting face-to-face that I can pitch my business to? What am I going to do? Am I going to wait, stay back? You are more articulate when it comes to pitching. I will wait. I am more outspoken and more thing with certain things. I just touch on the emotions. This person is more emotional. She got children. Like, who was the maker of this person? I like sit down and listen to what people have to say and strategize how you're going to make your move. Because all of that I've learned through video games and not only just video games, but video games I'm playing with my husband. And that is how we have integrated that aspect into our work. People just, I mean, yeah, it's escapism. It's fun. It's stuff like that. But I find when we take time to use it business-wise as well, it has really amped our game um, as as business partners, as married couple, and as friends. Mm-hmm. Get get you a PlayStation. Get two. <laughs> get two. <laughs> you know, every time I talk to you, a whole bunch of songs come through my head. Like earlier when you were talking about, um, I serious is every time. Like last time we had our conversation last year, like. Every time you spoke about certain things, songs popped up in my head. Earlier, you were talking about professionalism. And that song, I Am Not My Hair. That, uh, I yeah, I yeah. <laughs> that at some point, uh, you said, so, I can't remember exactly what you said, but I started thinking about starting from the bottom, now we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I thinking about that song, tag team, tag team. Anyhow, <laughs> you understand the tag teaming like, when you get here today. So, like, yeah, all of that, but two things are not necessarily questions and I think I forgot one so one thing what <laughs> um you were talking to about hmm, I can't remember exactly the point you were making but one of the thoughts that came to my mind is how we tend to get a little confused in business because we keep getting conflicting information but then we have to realize that balance is key right mm-hmm. and I say that because for instance on one hand you would, you would look at somebody in business and tell them you have to be invested in the outcome. But on the other hand, you would tell them don't be attached to the outcome, right? Mm-hmm. And both mm-hmm. of those things actually hold a level of truth in them. So it's like mm-hmm. when you're in business or when in life in general, you have to be able to find that middle ground between the mm-hmm. polar opposite advice that you might tend to get. And middle ground yeah. doesn't mean literally the middle I just like for me, balance doesn't mean that all things are equal, you know. Mm-hmm. It just means that the, you know you have to go with the ebbs and flows and, and make sure that you could maintain, you know, that level of balance. Some days you're going to have to put in more, some days it's a little less, you know, mm-hmm. and go from there. Um yeah. so before we end, could you please tell people, because I really can't remember. <laughs> Right. Could you please tell people how they can get into contact with you? Yeah, man. All right. So 
For those of you who've just joined, my name is Empress Zenga. I am the co-founder of Gaina.com. Um, my running partner is my husband, DJ Simmons, and Gaina is a web portal. Um, Bajan, an online experience to Bajan arts and culture um, here in Barbados. Now, if you want to know more about us, you can go on over to Gainon.com. We are also here on Instagram under Wuh Gainon. Um, we're actually on Twitter as well, growing there as well. Um, but you can send an email to Wuh, W U H, at Gainon.com, G I N E O N.com. And you can find out more about us on the web portal if you want to send us an email email is well at gaynon.com um also we are currently in the midst of our freedom festival it's our contribution to the crop over festival and currently it's going to be from july until august but we have done some stuff um just some pages to give you some information there's going to be spoken word um so if you are interested in contributing as well and you have a french event around this time that can coincide with the freedom festival please let us know last year we had a whole spoken word visual show um so if there's spoken word artists out there um, we have the literary arts magazine that will be um dealing with that oh i got to big up lennox those of you who know lennox um musician his song is actually the theme song pressure um is the theme song for this year and the theme this year is all about bridging the gap so we are going to be looking at ways the community can bridge the gap within the Emancipation Festival and our mini uh, festival as well. What does it mean to bridge the gap between Black people in the community? What has gone before and how we can move forward as a people? So you can check that out. The page, specific page for that is on gainon.com slash Freedom Festival. All the information is there. If you is a poet, if you is write things, if you's a dancer, if you do visual art, if you have any fringe events dealing with Afrocentricness or anything dealing with the Crop Over Arts Festival, you can do that as well. If we have a radio show, how could I forget about that? We have a radio show every Saturday from 11 until 1 on CBC's 947 FM. Uh, we have um, people who come on every Saturday. Um, we interview artists and cultural practitioners as well. Um, there's so much. I hope we don't forget anything. Um, <laughs> I think, I think that's most of it. But if you want to contact me, if you're an artist, you got information, you're a cultural practitioner, you got event going on, check out gainon.com and message us. We are more than able to answer any of your queries. <laughs> I hope I forget nothing. I really, really hope I forget nothing. That was off the top of my head. <laughs> well, that's a lot, honestly. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah. thank you very much. I really enjoyed this interview. As usual. Thank you. Um, Make a mix. You can get here at the end. You can imagine. Yes. She will watch the replay. Yeah. She she's she's my Nairobi's dance teacher. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not Nairobi boy in here doing Mother Sally dances all week. <laughs> <laughs> um so Okay, so I'm Shamara Hollingsworth of Vision to Reality International. I work with women to help them to structure their businesses by using systems and processes. And right now I'm focusing on the customer journey. So if there's anybody who wants to find out a little bit of information about the customer journey, please feel free to go to the link in my bio to download the three secrets to a remarkable customer journey. That's a free ebook that you can get once you do that. And I Bid you all to have a wonderful, wonderful night. Great seeing you, Zinga. Bye, everyone. Thank you for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>